Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will be testing the Genmitsu 4040 Pro CNC router. In addition to the stock setup with a standard 75 watt spindle, I will be experimenting with two spindle upgrades. The first upgrade is a 300 watt spindle that can be directly dropped into the machine. And the second is the powerful Makita wood router, which has a horsepower of one and a quarter or 800 watts. I'm really excited to see the cutting power and how well these upgrades work with the machine. Let's run through an overview of the machine's features. The working area is 400 by 400 millimeters and the Z height is 84 millimeters, allowing for thicker materials. The machine frame is made of aluminum and the X and Y axis use dual 16 millimeter steel rods, making them super rigid. The Z axis uses 10 millimeter rods and the frame has panels to protect the lead screws from debris. It uses standard NEMA 17 stepper motors and all of them have a jog wheel for manual axis movement. The machine comes with a two piece MDF spoil board with M6 threads all over for clamp mounting. It also includes a Z probe for stock and tool height adjustment. The frame can be mounted on a workbench to ensure stability and the control board supports an offline controller and a four axis roller, but these are optional upgrades that need to be purchased separately. Overall, for the price of around $500, the hardware looks impressive. I would like to thank Genmitsu for sending me this machine to review, and with that, let's get started. The assembly of this machine is really simple. So to focus more on the testing, I will just roughly put everything in their positions throughout the assembly process, but you can still see where you need to tighten all the screws. Assembling this machine should take 10 to 15 minutes. Besides the frame, we have a 75 watt spindle on the Z axis, a power supply, some cables, and a toolbox. Inside the toolbox, you have all the screws you need to put the machine together, some engraving bits, ER11 collets, a Z probe, and some spare parts. This machine only comes with a basic 75 watt spindle, but the mount also fits 52 millimeter spindles like those commonly used in 300 watt and 500 watt ones. When you buy a spindle kit, it normally comes with one mount, but you don't need that for this machine. You can also purchase a 65mm mount for a Makita router that I will also test out later in the video. I've also fixed this machine on a 2 by 2 and 3 quarter inch plywood, so I will start with this setup. To make sure everything is working, I will start with a simple engraving job on a 2mm MDF using 500mm per minute feed rate, 1mm depth of cut, and 5000 RPM spindle speed. But, it seems the MDF is too thin and can't handle the power of the spindle, so I will restart the job and engrave at 0.5mm and keep the same settings. Okay, everything seems to be working fine. I will now jump into Fusion 360 and do some more engraving and cutting. Let's start with this Harry Potter Gryffindor house logo. I just downloaded an SVG file online and I will extrude it in Fusion 360. Then in the CAM environment, I will run two operations. The first one will be engraving and I will use the same 500 millimeter per minute feed rate to engrave 0.5 millimeter in depth in one pass. The preview looks good. After that, I will run a contour to cut out the logo. Using the same 500 millimeter per minute feed rate and one millimeter depth of cut, I will cut it deep to the bottom. As I will use a half inch oak wood, I will set it to cut down to 13.5 millimeters, which will be around 0.8 millimeters lower than the bottom of the wood. I will do a preview and then I will export two operations in two different files and open them in the free candle CNC controller software. Let's start with the engraving. I will mount this half inch oak board using the clamps that came with the machine.
the engraving took around 5 minutes to finish. As the width of this job is only 70 millimeters, considering we need to engrave that much detail on such a small surface, the result isn't too bad. If I use harder wood like walnut, the result should be even cleaner. Then, I would change the engraving bit to a 1 8 inch flat end mill with a 25 millimeter cutting length to run the contour. As I just used a 1 millimeter step down, it will do 14 passes to cut out the shape completely. The machine will take around 11 minutes to complete this operation. The final result is quite clean, with the edges cutting through completely. Next, I am going to make a logo with acrylic. Similar to my previous jobs, I will start engraving, and then use a contour operation to cut it out. The engraving process took 19 minutes to complete, followed by the contour operation which took 8 minutes. The result looks alright, and as expected, even the basic spindle can handle wood and acrylic without any issues. However, generally, a stock 775 spindle cannot handle aluminum, but since the machine is quite rigid, I am going to try some 1 8 inch thick 6061 aluminum and see how the spindle does. To start, I am going to do some simple text engraving. I will begin with the 100mm per minute feed and a 0.1mm step down. I set it to run 3 passes, so it took me 27 minutes and 33 seconds to complete. The result looks alright, but I think I should do just one pass instead of three, which should only take 10 minutes. Next, I will mill a 2mm depth slot with the same 100mm per minute feed and a 0.1 step down. Unfortunately, the spindle is not powerful enough to do this, but I will still let it finish. The edges are not clean, as I may be pushing this machine too far with the stock spindle. I will slow it down to 50mm per minute and a 0.05mm step down and see if the stock spindle can handle this. It took me 16 minutes to mill just this 2mm depth slot, but the result is not too bad. 
So I assume that a speed of 50 millimeters per minute and a 0.05 millimeter step down should be able to work with aluminum on this stock setup. With these settings, I'm going to try to make a pocket. The size of the pocket is 20 by 20 millimeters and the depth is one millimeter. It will take quite some time to mill at this slow speed. and it finally took me 43 minutes and 36 seconds to complete. The result is not great, but I can at least work with aluminum, even with a stock spindle. Then, I will change the spindle to a 300 watt one. I need to work with some wiring and clamping ferrules. I will remove the stock 75 watt spindle from the mount. The mount is actually 52 millimeters, so I just need to remove the washer and directly put a 300 watt or 500 watt spindle on this machine. As the 300 watt spindle comes with a 48 volt power supply, I need to control it manually using the knob to adjust the speed. Since I mainly use this to mill aluminum, I will just turn it all the way to the highest speed, which is 12,000 RPM most of the time. I will try the same engraving with the new spindle, using 100 milliliters per minute and a 0.1 millimeter step down. It takes less than 4 minutes to finish. Then, I will try to mill some slots, starting with 100 mm per minute and a 0.3 step down. It seems a 0.3 step down is a bit too much, as the result is not so good. As the X and Y axis of this machine are using dual 16mm linear rods, they are super rigid, but the Z axis that holds the spindle is only using 10mm rods, so it may not be able to support two aggressive cuts. I will retry with 100mm per minute and a 0.2 step down. It seems this 0.2 step down is much better, and the result is pretty acceptable. I will try to mill some pockets, starting with 100 mm per minute, and even less, a 0.1 mm step down. It takes 22 minutes and 12 seconds to finish. It's still slow, but is much faster than the stock spindle's 43 minutes and 36 seconds. As it should be able to handle a 0.2 step down, I would do one more with 0.2 millimeters. This time, it only takes 11 minutes and 18 seconds. The result is not as good as the 0.1mm step down, but it is still acceptable. Next, I will run a contour to cut through the entire plate using a 0.2mm step down. It takes 41 minutes and 14 seconds to complete. The edges are not super clean, but I can still mill, cut, and work with aluminum with this 300 watt spindle upgrade. 
After that, I will install the 65mm mount with the Makita router. The power of this router is 1 and a quarter horsepower, which is around 800 watts. As it connects directly to the AC outlet, the installation is much easier than the 300 watt spindle kit. I just connected both the machine and the router to the same power strip, so the switch can also work as an emergency stop to stop both if anything goes wrong. As the weight of the Makita router is even heavier than the 300 watt spindle, it actually moves quite a lot when I push it from the top as well as from the bottom. The router also uses a knob to control the speed from 1 to 6, and the speed range is 10,000 to 30,000 RPM. Let's start with the middle level, which is level 4. I would like to start with a smaller diameter end mill, but since the collet of my Makita router only fits standard quarter inch shank bits, the only small bit I have is a 4 flute 1 8 inch diameter, which may not be ideal for cutting at high speeds. However, I will still try it out and see what happens. I will start with the same 20x20mm 20 deep pocket. Unfortunately, the 4 flute end mill is cutting too fast at this speed, so I slowed it down to level 1, which is around 10,000 RPM. I started with a conservative 100mm per second and 0.1mm step down. It took 5 minutes and 47 seconds to mill the slot, which looks okay, so I increased the step down to 0.2mm. It took 2 minutes and 46 seconds to complete, so I then tried a 0.3 step down. It took 2 minutes and 18 seconds and still looks good, so I continued to increase the step down until I broke something or I got a really bad result. At a 0.4mm step down, it took 1 minute and 41 seconds and was still okay, so I tried a 0.5mm step down. As you can see, the MDF spoil board is compressed down, which means the end mill can't cut fast enough. So, we can get pretty good results at 100mm per minute with a 0.2 step down with this end mill at power level 1 or 10,000 RPM. I will try to mill a pocket with these settings and see how it looks. It took 11 minutes and 17 seconds, which is 4 times faster than the stock setup. It looks not bad, so I increased the step down to 0.3mm. It took 9 minutes to complete, and the 0.3 step down looks a bit rough, but I think this setup can work better with a better end mill. So, I decided to try a quarter inch diameter 2 flute carbide end mill from Speed Tiger. I started with 100mm per minute and a 0.1mm step down. Unfortunately, the level 1 power at 10,000 RPM may be a bit too low with this larger 2 flute end mill, as it didn't cut fast enough. So, I switched to level 2 to get a mill with a higher speed. It looks better, but still not good, so I tried level 3. This time, it sounds and looks much better, and the result is also clean. Let's see what happens with level 4.
I compared the results, and I think I need at least level 3 to get good results with this quarter inch 2 flute and mill. The edges are clean, and I think these settings are pretty good. But machining this tiny slot took more than 5 minutes, which is too long for me, so I decided to push it even further. I decided to try a 0.2 step down at a level 3 power. Unfortunately, level 3 wasn't enough for a 0.2mm step down at a 100mm per minute feed rate. While the time was less than 3 minutes, I thought it would be better to boost it to level 4. Level 4 looked much better, so I decided to try level 5 and see what the difference was. It looked good, so I moved on to level 6. Upon comparing the results, it seemed that levels 4 to 6 worked pretty well with a 0.2mm step down. So, I decided to start with levels 4, 5, and 6 and try a 0.3mm step down. They all look good, so I tried a 0.4mm step down at level 6. It still didn't break anything, so I decided to try a 0.5mm step down. which finished in 1 minute and 24 seconds, and still produced good results. I tried a 0.6mm step down, but I found that this was the limit and it couldn't go any faster. I took a look at the results and found that for a 0.3mm step down, level 5 seemed to work pretty well. If I worked the router at maximum speed, it could go up to a 0.5 step down without breaking anything and still offer acceptable results. Next. I decided to make some pockets at a 0.3mm step down and level 5 power. It only took 8 minutes and 16 seconds, which is almost 6 times faster than the stock setup. I then tried a 0.4mm step down with level 6 power and boosted the feed rate from 100 to 200mm per minute, which took 3 minutes and 19 seconds, which is 14 times faster than the stock setup, which took 43 minutes and 36 seconds. The result still looks pretty good. Finally, I will be cutting through the plate now using the same high speed of 200mm per minute and a 0.4mm step down with maximum power. Although the result wasn't super clean, it was still acceptable at this speed. Overall, I am quite happy with this $100 Makita router upgrade. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons of this machine, starting with the pros. 1. I found this machine to be quite heavy and sturdy, even without mounting it on a workbench or having the extra thick wood board. The X and Y axis with dual 16mm linear rods are rigid enough to handle most jobs. Two. The assembly process is relatively easy, especially compared to other budget CNC machines in the market. You just need to lay it down on the table and tighten some screws. 3. 
I really like the flexible spindle upgrade options. The stock spindle mount is a 52mm mount which fits most 300W and 500W spindles. If you want something with more power, you can spend another $30 to get an aluminum 65mm mount to use a wood router like that Makita RT0701C that I used in the video. The cutting power on aluminum is awesome, and the price for the wood router is just around $100. It cuts aluminum 13 times faster than the stock setup with pretty good results. 4. This machine also comes with a Z-probe, which is a nice feature, although I normally prefer using paper to set the tool height, just like how I work with a 3D printer. 5. The job wheels on the stepper motors are convenient, as they allow me to easily adjust and fine-tune the position without using the controller software. 6. The 84mm Z-height is good enough for longer tools and thicker materials. The open frame also allows me to fit longer materials, like the 3-foot or 4-foot standard wood board that I bought from Home Depot. As long as I have space on my workbench, I don't need to cut it to be a shorter length to fit in the machine. Now for the cons. 1. The X and Y axis use dual 16mm steel linear rods, which are rigid, but the Z axis only uses 10mm rods. This may not be good enough to support a heavy wood router. It still works, but if the Z axis also used 16mm rods, I am sure I could have pushed the speed even further. 2. The emergency button is the exact same as the power button. When you need to stop the machine right away if something goes wrong, it may not be as effective as a classic emergency button. 3. The MDF spoil board is made up of two pieces. If it used a thicker one-piece board instead, it would allow for more aggressive step-downs and would hold the stock much tighter. In conclusion, I believe this machine is an excellent value for its price point. If your main materials are wood and acrylic, then the stock setup will work just fine. However, if you're looking to work with aluminum and cut everything faster, I highly recommend upgrading to a $100 Makita router and a $30 aluminum spindle mount. With this setup, you can cut aluminum at 200mm per minute with a 0.4mm step down, which is quite fast for a budget machine. Additionally, this machine is beginner friendly, making it an excellent option for those looking for their first CNC router or an upgrade from a CNC 3018. I included a link to the machine in the description. That's all I wanted to share about this machine. If you found this video useful, please consider giving us a like and subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.